Mr. Math here, thanks for watching my videos. Be sure to like and subscribe and remember to click the bell icon to be notified of updates. Hello again viewers, welcome back to Let's Play Torn of the Golden Country. We're here in Torna, heading onto the capital, which should be up there, I think. Turcos Plateau. Is that supposed to be a weird way of spelling turquoise? Turquoise Plateau? Because it was, there was a lot of really vivid greenish blue grass and water up there. Well, no matter. We are heading to the capital. And I figure, just go straight there. At this point, there's no reason Where shall we head to, next? to go anywhere else that I'm aware of. I don't know, maybe if we went back to Gormot or we Nature makes a the fine ally. opening area of Torna, we'd find some side quests or something, but eh. Might as well just open up the capital and see what that brings us. Aren't we interested? I'm something of an expert. Okay, there's still a few gather points. Of, and there's a yellow one, too. That one might have some nifty stuff. Okay, Hayes, don't disappoint Aren't me. Aren't we interested? I'm something of an expert. Good job. Kind of a mess selection. Uh. Aren't we intrepid? Yeah, nothing else here. I wonder, should I make it morning when I head into the capital? Aren't we intrepid? I'm something of an expert. I thought there was a treasure chest there, but no. Just a discolored bit of rock. Aren't we interested? Nature makes a fine ally. And nothing else over here. Alright. Looks like we're done collecting. Time to head on in. And yeah, let's go ahead and make it morning bit more of a grand entrance. There we go. Looks kind of deserted. Well, that's not right. What's not right? This Titan. Why isn't it in its real form? You noticed. What do you mean? That isn't the original form of the Torn and Titan. In ancient times, the Torn and Titan held awesome power. Torna made use of that power to dominate all the rest for a thousand years. But the power was shut away in the reign of Electos I. Since then, the Titan has looked like this. See that glowing sphere in the castle tower? That forms the seal. Is that what Malus is aiming for? Why would he do that? Wouldn't it be a threat to him too? Truthfully, I don't know myself. But in any case, 
If he makes a move for it, it is clear what we must do. Agreed. You can see the palace in the distance. We should head there first. Offer our report to His Majesty. Where are all the people? <laughs> I mean, granted it's pretty early morning, but at least some of them ought to be out by now. are well into the portion of the game that I don't really know. Like I said at the start of this Let's Play, I have watched other people play this, but I've never played it myself. So I don't really remember very much. And yeah, we've gotten into the area that I'm not very well versed on. Well-groomed guard Carnelian. My skin's all rough today. I must have not have, must have not had enough sleep. What do you think? Of course, the body doesn't just take care of itself, and it's tough to get the stuff for that around here. Drivers can give themselves a boost with accessories, blades with ox cores, right? They all have their own particular effects. Like some are restorative, some are offensive, some are defensive. Boy, this has drifted off the original point, hasn't it? Torn is a bit behind the times, if you ask me. Uriah is where, it at, where it's at right now for grooming technology. I hear there's this thing that works directly on the cells to make them lustrous and moist. I'd love to try it. Okay, our first person in the royal capital. Wait a second, not our first person in the royal capital? Hmm. Okay, I guess these are all people who we got elsewhere before reaching the capital, and now that we've reached the capital, they've moved? Hmm. Anxious guard Chalcedony. Chalcedony? Hmm. Not too sure. That looks vaguely Celtic to me, but... I really don't know. Anyway. Hey there, Traveler. Could I ask you a question? Like, at what age should a big brother stop making a little bro's packed lunch for him? Uh, sorry. That's kind of a strange question to ask. You see, I've got this friend whose big bro makes him his lunch. I mean, the little bro, it's not like he's a kid. I mean, he's grown. He can take care of himself. He even has a job doing guard duty on the gate, so he can make his own damn pack lunch. I'm old enough, damn it. Ah, my friend I met. He's old enough. But the big bro, he just keeps waking up early to make these lunches. If he didn't waste his energy on all this fussing, he could be moving up in the world. I just don't know why he... Uh... I mean, okay, I get it, but hey, someone else makes your lunch. That's time that you don't have to spend. <clears throat> and aside from that, I mean, it's family, right? So just, you know, let him do his thing, why not? Yeah, but I guess everyone has their own personal anxieties. I can't read the... Journeyman Chef Malton, Cafe Amicus Owner Sorrel. Sorrel looks a bit disturbed. Phew, another day of overfilling my belly. But I'm not done eating yet. The delicacies and finery of torn and cooking aren't just about filling your face. Until I get to savor a legendary dish from that famous chef, my trip kind of be over. Oh, he's Ardanian. I came all the way from more Ardane to tickle my taste buds with her legendary taste. I'm going to get me some of Miss Sorrel's cooking and make this trip worth my while. She doesn't seem too interested. I was 
kind of wondering about uh, the attempt at an accent. New customers? Hello, welcome to the best restaurant in the capital, if I do say so myself. Although, I have to admit, I've had a bit of a rough time lately, and it's affecting my cooking. I'm lucky to have regulars who will gladly eat here all the same, but I don't want them to be satisfied with less. Uh, sorry. Anyway, were you looking to have a meal? I'll cook, but I can't really recommend anything. Well, that's not a good attitude to have. If you're running a restaurant, you should... Be able to say, oh, everything's great. Eh, once again, everyone has their own anxieties. Let's see, where to go next? Musical Artisan Piper. Hello there, youngsters. Welcome. Welcome. Are you looking for any instruments this, in this particular... <clears throat> I'm messing that up. Are you looking for any instruments in particular this fine day? For beginners, I'd recommend the Torn and Viela. You'll be serenading your friends in no time at all. It's not got many strings, so it's simple to learn. There are also many good songs for beginners. It's a winner. Once you've learned some pieces, you can join an ensemble. It's a good way to improve in a hurry. We've even got a special event where people play the Torn and Viela to express thanks to the Titan. It's not an event to be missed. The music spreads through the air, so delicate yet so strong. He was trying a bit too hard to sell that, if you ask me. Ah, well. Musical Artisan Piper. Alright. Okay. The accessory shop. You don't have to look like a driver in need of some accessories. Take him back as souvenirs. Hang him off your clothes as a decoration. Can't go wrong with accessories. Alright, let's see. Boost dex by 20%. Boost agility by 20%. That one might be good on uh, Hugo. Back pauldrons increases mass damage. Silver feather. Start each battle with aggro medium effect. Okay. Increases HP restored when being revived. Increases HP restored when reviving a teammate. Okay, so this is when you are, when the wearer is being revived, and this is when the wearer is doing the reviving. Boost taunt resistance. That might be useful. I don't know. Boy, they're even putting the accessory seller in here. Guard, anxious guard, journeyman chef, cafe amicus owner, musical artisan. And the, uh, um, or whatever these things are called. Core chips. Okay. Expensive, but I can afford them, so. Hmm. Yeah, the wood chip. Look at that. Ups his critical rate and almost 100 extra auto attack. a healer, so neither block rate nor critical rate is all that important. Might as well go for the highest auto attack. Okay, she already has better auto attack than both of these. I could up her critical rate. 
But, eh. I wouldn't want to lose that much auto attack. Alright, oh, he already has a wood chip. Might as well leave him to it. And, yeah, she has something a lot better. At least for auto attack. Again, I could up her critical rate, and for Bridget, critical rate is actually decently useful. But keeping aggro is basically a matter of damage, and that much extra auto attack definitely helpful. So. Again, Jean has something better. Okay, that'll do. What do I have in terms of core chips? These are worth keeping. Oh, I'll think about it later. Ah. This again, right. Kindly Green Grocer Mana. All sorts live here in this city. But everyone carries their own worries around, and that makes us all alike. If someone came and asked you for help, you'd hear them out, eh? That's because you can empathize with them. That empathy is something the people you help will never forget. They'll support you, rain or shine. On top of that, once you make a name for yourself, new doors will open up on account of your rep. But don't let that fame go to your head, and never think of others as smaller than yourself. It only causes pain. Remember that, and the bonds you make will stay with you throughout your life. So that's basically lecturing us on how the community works. Sure, so getting a lot of folks in listed here, but not getting any new ones in actually in the community there. I need two more. Oh, there's a side quest. Maybe that'll get me somewhere. I don't remember where I met this guy before. I'm not going to name names, but there are certain countries where drivers use blades like they're disposable items. And it's not just down to the humans, either. The blades just go along with it like it's meant to be that way. So weird. Surely it's not right to say that some deserve to be treated with less respect because of things they can't control? Take Torna. It's peaceful as anything, and humans, blades, and titans live together in harmony. Sometimes I wonder if it's made Torna a bit too soft. Okay, getting some mixed messages here. Oh, napalm drugs. You're coming with me, treasure. So on the one hand, he thinks it's right to coming with me, respect treasure. people the way Torna does, but on the other hand, he's wondering if it's made Torna too soft. This is becoming nature <laughs> makes a fine ally. So let's check out Loopy Inventor Gideon. Ah, aspirant youths, stay right where you are. You have a look about you that tells me you might be interested in my most marvelous inventions. Here, look, I have hundreds of the things. Beautiers, aren't they? More Ardain has absolutely nothing on my masterworks, I tell you. I am, nevertheless, at somewhat of a loss as to how to surpass my former genius. What with the war on the horizon, it's been getting more and more difficult to find the parts I need. So now I've laid my woes bare. Could you perchance help the great Gideon collect some machine parts? I believe the ones lying around here in Torna should be choice enough. Okay, he wants parts. We'll scratch our backs, and we'll scratch yours. You are a very practical guy, Minoth. Sure, active quest. Alright, so what exactly does he need? Collect machine parts around... Okay. 
So basically I just have to keep on giving him parts until I reach 100 points. Okay, 16 of those, 8 of those, 2 of those. What's this worth? Whoa. That's worth 14, is it? Excellent work. A fine haul you have there. I extend my gracious thanks. At long last, I can now put the finishing touches on my alternate ultimate creation. Hee hoo hoo! I call it Gideon's special patented perpetual music box. As the name suggests, with just one turn of the key, it'll play music forever and ever with no interruption. Hmm, what's that? You want to know how to stop it? Well, gah <laughs> That's a good point. I've not thought of a good way yet. Eh, I think that's a problem for future Gideon to wrestle with. Anyway, you've helped me collect the parts, so why don't I teach you how to make your own as thanks? Okay. Ah, hold on now. It's coming to me. Yes. Yes! Eureka! I've got it! A flash of inspiration for a brand new invention. My next masterpiece? That will address any and all minor flaws which my last masterpiece may or may not have had. And for that, I'm going to need lots of parts that can withstand the dry climate around the capital. I hear tell that you can find those parts around Gormon. I trust you. I can rely on your help finding a few more of those parts. Excellent, excellent. Just bring them back to me when you found some. Let us dare to dream hand in hand, eh? Okay, same thing. Collect machine parts only in Gormon this time. Okay, what have I got? You took your time. I did, did I? I mean, I just didn't move at all. How goes the collection? A lot of bat hinges. What are they worth? Ten points? Okay. There we go. Marvelous! That looks like all the parts I need, yes. You have keen eyes, my fledgling friends. Behold my life's work. I call it Gideon's special patented <coughs> patented jamming megaphone its perfectly tuned mechanism cancels out any noise from the surroundings and magnifies the user's voice and since surely everyone loves the sound of their own voice there's no need for an off switch I'm brilliant hmm how far does the magnified voice carry you ask uh, what are you guys health and safety inspectors sheesh Thanks to my ingenious directionalizing technology, any voice you feed it, no matter how loud, will carry ten pads. Right, just about as far as if you shout. That's pretty much the point. Gahaha! Here, I'll share the recipe with you all so you can t take my groundbreaking invention out into the world. Recipe? That's usually used for cooking, not for inventing stuff. But, sure, whatever. Now we have the jamming megaphone also. It seems your contributions have allowed me to stay aloft after all. This marks the beginning of a new era of inventions. Why, before you know it, I'll be a household name. People will bow and scrape before me, begging for one of my creations. And I owe it, in part, to you keen-eyed kittywinks. Bravo! Well done, indeed. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, that's so sweet. Loopy inventor Gideon. Thanks to you, I'm confident I'll be able to keep inventing for many years to come. Feel free to come to me with any machinery related problems in the future. Okay, one more person needed. <sighs> Give me a shout next time something happens. The Tornin Inventor. The parts you collected allowed Gideon to complete his inventions. He intends to keep crafting for as long as his body holds out. That's rather ominous sounding. And, I mean, considering what game we're playing here... We know how this ends. Okay, so we got the new recipe there. Eh, no new, uh, blade stuff. Oh, hello, you lot. I thank you again for your invaluable assistance with my previous inventions. You may remember me saying before, but the parts you can find here differ greatly than those found in Gormon. 
Well, it's come to my knowledge that there are some particularly high quality parts to be had in Gormot. I hear you can even get your hands on gold parts. What I could do with gold, just thinking about it makes me drool. Yeah, well, I don't have a collector that allows me to get them yet. Okay, here we have another side quest. Maybe insect loving boy Marcus will be able to get us up to level 2 on our community. Oh, this is no good. It's going to take ages at this rate. Huh? You want me? You can ask me about anything you want as long as it's about insects. What? You're not interested in insects? Tut tut. Well, I tell you, there's more to insects than meets the eye. There's shiny shells, there's strong bendy legs. Plus, if you boil them up, you get some really useful medicines. Ah, oh yeah. I've collected loads of insects. Because I'm just a kid, I'm not allowed to go looking very far. But I need to get lots of insects as quickly as possible. You think you could bring me any insects you find? Thanks. Oh, and I'll need some from Gormot too, not just from Torna. Nuts about bugs. Uh. We shall handle it. Right. Same thing, I need to give him insects until I reach 100 points. That's a funky looking hat that he's wearing. Yep, reach 100 points. Hey, did you catch any insects? Looks like I've caught quite a few, actually. Lots of speckled monarchs. What are these worth? Only two. Oh. Alright. Lots of sand upas. Okay, these are worth four, so that's a bit better. Uh, I want to keep the sticky stick insects. Minoth needs those. Uh, Everyman Cicadas? Only three points for these. Oh, wow. Five points for Gregarious Scorpions. Six points for Munchy Grubs. Uh... Ooh. Ten points for that. And one more Speckled Monarch to round it out. Nice! That's more than enough. Thanks so much. If I can boil these up and get her to drink it, then maybe, just maybe, I knew it was going to be something like that. He's trying to make medicine for someone. Since he specifically mentioned medicine and then got kind of concerned shortly after that. That reminds me. I'm also partial to tinkering with machinery. Let me thank you properly. I'll show you a pretty amazing invention of mine. Great. Another problem solved. Marcus seems satisfied with the bugs you found and hopes to use them for our medicine. He also sets his sights on a new invention. Hmm. That last bit... Yeah, he's not part of the community yet. I just don't understand girls at all. How about you guys? I bet you feel the same way. Earlier, I made medicine from the Dana Weta we collected and gave it to this girl I know to drink. And she was all like, you get that gross stuff away from me. What the heck's her problem anyway? Bugs are super cool. How can a medicine made of 100% cool things be gross? I don't get it at all. Yeah, apparently he's young enough to not understand that different people have different tastes and opinions. Let's see. Waitin. Well, that name's familiar. What was her name? Lyda. As in the Lyda Oasis. Yeah. So this must be her dad. This, city's ha this city has a long history. There's shops, he there's shops been here more than 300 years. I myself come from 14 generations of craftsmen. We've been building in Torna for a long time. 
It's a fair old task taking on the weight of that history while adapting to the demands of the time. This city's built on blood, sweat, and tears, more than you know. You're talking to Prince Adam. I'm sure he understands pretty well, actually. Temperamental builder waiting. Okay. Apprentice glassmaker. The glass we make in this workshop is produced from rock and sand collected in the Dana Desert. All torn and glass work, but also ritual implements and ceremonial accessories are made from our very own glass. In fact, I heard that the army recently ordered extra strong glass from my teacher for making a new ship. The name of the ship was, uh, I think it started with Mo. Nope, sorry, it's gone now. Anyway, I'm just an apprentice for now. I can only make things like water jugs and little glass baubles. But you should see the things my instructor can make. They're well made and sturdy, but still utterly exquisite. I wonder if that means we're actually going to run into her teacher. Possibly as part of another side quest? Harried Shipwright Akin. Oh, there's a field skill check right there. Hmm? You need something? As you can see, things are busy around here. So the Aegis has been wrecking stuff all over the place, right? Well, it's made my ship orders go through the roof. Of course, it happens right when my master retires, too. We're desperately short-staffed. I didn't think it would be this hard to take everything on myself, but responsibility is more than I imagined. Hmm. Sounds like I'm going to have to find him some help, perhaps. Don't have to tell me twice. Witness my irresistible force. Ah. You're coming with me, treasure. A flower chip. Buy those. But I get one for free. Hooray. Residential ward. Okay. Ernest Warrior Jerry. Looks like an Orion. <sighs> Amateurs. I don't have time for you, mates. I'm busy. And yet you're now part of our gathering, as it were. Concerned Mother Marina. If it's the palace you're after, my lordships, just follow those steps up and it's on the left. Can't miss it. Oh, begging your pardon, most folks are looking for the palace. You're asking after the girl? That's my daughter, Freya. Or is it Freja? Hmm. She's been very frail since birth, an awful sickness, your lordships, just terrible. The doctors say there's no medicine in this land of Torna that would be able to help her. It's as good as it's incurable. Sometimes I wonder what's to become of my little Freja. Well, that rips your heart out, doesn't it? I mean... Sick little girl. We have to help her. And when we do... I mean, we know how this ends. Ugh. Really not a fan of classic Greek tragedy. I'm envious of Joey and Marcus always running around outside and chatting with folk. <coughs> Sorry, I guess I'm a bit shy lately. I don't really get a chance to meet a lot of people, you see. Maybe I know something helpful, though. Oh, there are lots of really neat shops all over Torna. I'm sure if you have a look, you'll find tons of stuff that's useful for drivers and blades. I really wish I could go, but I'm going but to but going to busy places makes me too tired. All right. So 
slowly building up our collection of people. I don't actually want to go to the palace yet. I want to keep checking out the city. the palace. I could go up there and speak to the person who's next to the gate. Passionate youngster Luke. Luck? Or Luke? Yeah. Did you guys see it? The Tornin' Army, I mean. Weren't you watching? It was the Royal Tornin' Army, guys. They had those whopping long spears and really functional light armor. The design on that armor is just... Man... They are so cool. This year I'm definitely joining up. What, I don't get him in the uh, community list? Squad Leader Onyx. Our squad's job is to guard the palace, but they don't send anyone decent for the job these days. Bleed and shame. The problem is, the palace hasn't needed defending in so long. No invasion gets far enough to actually threaten it. Which is great, but it means our squad is short on real fighters lately. Everyone gets this job because of family connections. All they do is skive off and swan about admiring each other's shoes. They don't know the first thing about soldiering. It's a pretty dire situation. A real attack and we're on, we're on for a battering. This load of assholes won't know what hit them. It serve him right, too. <laughs> I wish I could replace the lot, but good talent doesn't grow on trees, you know. Yeah. I mean, at least he knows what he's dealing with. Looking like I might have to cut this video in two. Yeah, I've got a few more minutes, but then I'm gonna have to take a quick pause. Whoa! You just beamed in out of nowhere! Elderly Potter Muriel. Mirelli? Ugh, all of these names. Here in Torna, we revere the might of the Titans. It's essentially our religion. Though it's not like we're much in the way of special rituals or rules. We just believe in respecting the life that surrounds us. Titans, humans, blades, we're all the same, really. Every one of us is a gift to the world we live in. And sometimes it can be good to show our gratitude for that. Considering Amalthus' overall view on things in the base game, yeah, that's pretty incompatible with what he feels. Nopon Trader Deku Deku. Meh meh, Tornin Town, wonderful. Impressive palaces, beautiful gardens, and this splendid moat full of wonders. Sightseeing? Meh, no, no, no. At end of day, Deku Deku is proud trader of Vultus Trade Guild. Wandering around town is to expand trading knowledge. Meh. And there were some Nopon drugs down there. Gonna have to fetch those. Okay. Nopon trader Deku Deku in the Orem Storage Ward. You're coming with me, treasure. You're coming with me, treasure. What? Aren't we intrepid? Amber sweetfish. Ugh, that sounds awful.
I've had fish and seafood that comes with a sweet taste to it, and it just disagrees with my palate. Pyrithium Guild member Momini. Here is an here's an info pond. Other side of moat, there is fancy schmancy gardens. And in one corner of gardens is very tall lookout point. The view from tippy top is probably enough to make eyes hurt. Momimi like high places, but they not good for health. Give Momimi terrible urge to jump off to world below. After all, might be able to leap to super secret places from up there. Roof of buildings are hidden away back streets. But Momimi sure landing from that high up from that high up hurt like crazy, so probably best to resist urges. Leave it for real daredevils. Advice on how to find secret areas. Okay. I'm going to have to put a quick cut into the video. From your perspective, viewers, I should be right back. Okay, here we are. So... Where is this exactly? Okay, so we're in the Orange Storage Ward. Slacker Soldier Clark. Clarky? Yeah, Clark. Let's just... Say it how it looks. Man, there's really not much to do when you're guarding a warehouse on the edge of the city. Ho-hum. Huh? You know this warehouse belongs to the Royal Palace, right? Don't come any closer or I'll do something. Nah, just kidding. <sighs> you came all the way out here and I'm so bored. How about a story to pass the time? This warehouse is actually old. Like, way old. It's been around for generations. Every once in a while, a rumor goes around that something is buried beneath it, like a treasure, maybe. You wouldn't guess it's been it's that old, though, would you? It's been redone so often, it looks like all the other boring buildings. No? I guess that's interesting information. I wonder if it's important somehow. Let's see. So, there's something past the gate here? Uh, this is new. This place would make a perfect base of operations. Um, Bridget, it is a walled city. <laughs> That's kind of the point. Okay, so they're not letting me out. Uh, okay. I wonder what's beyond there. Hmm. I wonder if I can somehow get up to the top of the roofs there. That Nopon was talking about climbing up high and jumping around on the rooftops. Fish Farmer Tyler and Spirited Fishmonger Chica. What do you think? Don't all these fish look happy and healthy? Feisty critters. I tell you, they've got it good. I'm even selling fish to the palace now. Considering who my customer is, I really want to provide the best I can. Hey, what do you mean my fish don't look good enough to sell to the palace? See how many big glossy fish are swimming around in the moat? Every one of them started out in these pails. I didn't say anything about your fish. Don't you put words in my mouth. Fish Farmer Tyler. And then Spirited Fishmonger Chica. All I do is work in the warehouse. Work, work, work. I never get to do anything fun. I'd really love to do something touristy, like go on a shopping spree or visit the park in the middle of the city. The park was designed by a famous gardener, did you know that? It's supposed to be so beautiful. Is there anything in particular stopping you from just going to see it? Or I mean, it's right there, isn't it? Okay, that looks like uh, the, the whole city of another that day. Knowing that there's a tomorrow, that's what gives us hope. Perhaps I'll have another. A lot of 
talking right now. Hmm. Uh, Adam. Boy, I really didn't need to hear that. I just didn't. Amateur flautist Rikoko. Climb stairs straight up to get to Sashim Gardens, Pride of Capital. From there, Prince can head to Aquila Watchtower or amble over to Aris Palace. But not to Miss Gardens. Beautiful place of calm, and recently traveling bards set up wonderful music, too. Ah, if gate closed, Rikoko recommend going round and entering from side of shopping wall. Huh. On the Pischeter Bridge. Pischeter? Uh, not sure how to say that. Why would they close the gate? We made it. Good stuff. One of my favorite parts of adventuring. Okay, I guess we had, do have to go around. Scruffy Armu Herder Joey. I tried racing with a trotting Armu. To make it harder, I looked over my shoulder at the same time. In the end, I lost. Surprised? Thing is, Armus don't even really understand the idea of competition. They just love me as their master. So as a game, I didn't really work out. I'll have to try and think up something else that's better for an Armu. Some of my mates are thinking up fun Armu games too. So I'm going to try something new each day, I reckon. I mean, it's more fun if you change things up a bit, right? If I don't make it fun, I'll probably die of boredom looking after these Armus every day. Yeah, I was about to say the Armus themselves probably didn't care, but... I'll wager it's not a very interesting job. I mean, they're literally just cows. Anything else back here? Nope. Anything out there? I got those little islands. I don't see anything down there. Well then, let us go around and into the palace gardens. On drugs. The suspense is killing me. Head Muskerpon Ruru. Halt, who go there? Who challenge Ruru? Strangers come here to kick us out. Old lady from market must have told on us again. Meh, Ruru and Brother Pons find this tip top base is ours. If friends want us to move, friends find better base for us, hmm? I couldn't care less, Ruru. Feel free to stay. Head Muskerpon Ruru. Musker Pawn. Hmm. Is that meant to be a play on Musketeer? I mean, I guess more Ardain has kind of, sort of, muskets? Steam-powered guns, I think. Anything else back here? 
Nope. Just a load of junk. Wait a second, what's that over there? Ah, treasure. The suspense is killing me. Okay. Every little bit helps. We need to get up to uh, Bridget's next lock picking spot. Oh, blast it. Now we're going to have to go the long way around, aren't we? Huh. I guess it's not too far around. Anyway. I was thinking you were apologizing for that incredibly loud shout. That kind of surprised me. Loyalist Gardener Rye. I did a bit of traveling myself back in the day. Saw a bit of the world. Plentiful lands of lakes and forests, exotic cities with strange houses and even stranger food. But I have to say, there's no place quite like Torna. No big wars or famine or terrible epidemics here. Tornans live in peace and quiet thanks to our wise and prudent king. Past kings might have been brutal despots, but our king rules with reason and isn't afraid of change or reform. Some folks are critical of a king with such a progressive outlook, but I think he's clever. Very clever. Those are some impressive eyebrows. They completely cover his eyes. This is becoming addictive. Ah, more Nopon drugs. Wonder how many more of these I need to find. You're coming with me, Trevor. The suspense is killing me. Okay, I'm gonna see if the side quest actually tells me that. Oh my goodness. 20 more? Wow. Where could they possibly be hidden? I feel like I'm checked everywhere almost. Yeah. Okay, I have found 50. That's an awful lot. But wow. I still need to find 20 more. Jeez. Well, at least it did tell me how many are left. Hey, there's a ladder going up there. Uh, this, so this is the watchtower that person told us about earlier. Okay, can't open that door. The view from here is immaculate, don't you think? Sure, but uh, should we even be here? You know, inspecting the view is a very important part of my job. Well, I'll leave you to it then. Wow, okay. Am 
Where would I even want to go? Oh, look at this. Green barrel number 51. The suspense is killing me. dropping down right here. Is there anything worth it over there? Hmm. I could get over to that platform now, but it doesn't look like there's anything there worth getting excited about. is killing me. Beast Hunter. Is there anywhere else I can go or even want to go? <laughs> Come on, you can make it, Lark. There we go. Treasure. You're coming with me, treasure. What else? If I go back up the tower, could I get down onto that wall over there and sort of go over that way? Get onto the roofs on the other side, going that way? It would be kind of tricky. I can't tell for sure that I would get a good angle. Worth a try, I think. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Okay. That was kind of weird, but whatever works, I suppose. Yeah, there's really nothing up here. Ah, that's disappointing. Right then. Let's give it another shot.
Hugo fell off the ladder. How clumsy of the Emperor. Okay, can I do... Uh, maybe? Come on, more. It's a better thing. Thank you. Oh! Blast! Just barely missed. Yeah, I don't think I'm gaining anything by being up there. Uh, okay, I think that's enough playing around with that for now. Let's see if there's anyone else to talk to in the royal gardens there, and then actually go over to the uh, entrance to the palace. The start of another day. There may never be another day like this one. Treasure it. Boy, considering how this DLC adventure Adam ends, stuck, seems. Adam just keeps saying really awkward things. <laughs> There's someone to talk to. Woman of Leisure, Ofa. Oh well, welcome to our rescue, young drivers and blades. May I ask, are you all properly equipped with accessories? Accessories are not just mere baubles, you know. They are part and parcel of the driver's gear. You've got your hats, your chokers, your amulets, and so on. Each item has different effects, you can see. You young things are always questing. I'll bet there are some accessories that could really help along the way. You know, my granddaughter has an accessory shop in town. You should stop by sometime if you fancy it. We have actually already done so, but thanks for the suggestion. Woman of Leisure, Ofa. Alright. So here's the other side of the closed gate. And some Nopon drugs. The suspense is killing me. 52 and 53. The suspense is killing me. How many of those red pollen orbs have I found? I mean, I found 53 of the chest, but how many of the actual orbs? 88, wow, okay. Hmm. I wonder what they're good for. Aside from, you know, getting high. Young art dealer Sarah. Welcome, travelers. Have you see have you been enjoying some of the torn in sights? There's plenty to see in the residential ward. There's a range of merchants and the artisans have their workshops there. But of course the main tour spot in town is Ares Palace, where the king of Torna lives. I don't. I didn't know this before I moved here, but the royal palace is so huge in part because it also houses workshops for renowned engineers and craftspeople. Most people aren't actually allowed to see the workshops, but I bet they're magnificent. We've sure found a lot of people. Makes sense since it's a pretty big city. But we just need to move one more of them into the supporters list in the community there. Okay, one of those slate pieces. Dark gray slate piece. Alright. Refined retiree arm. Did you know that this splendid garden was made for the first king of Torna? The placement of the stones and the patterns in the sand are meant to reflect the natural world we're part of. But do you know for what purpose the garden was made and why this location in particular was chosen? The intention was that seeing this garden would keep the viewer from losing their grounding in nature. Ancient Tornans thought it of the utmost importance, and the current king is keeping this tradition alive too. The king sounds like he cares about the Titan a great deal. Now isn't that a ruler we can all be proud of? Another fellow whose eyebrows have completely overgrown his eyes. 
arb. Let's see here. Grimaudian and Orion, that's an unusual pairing. Toragonda music. Azarn. This country is a weird one. Folks are kind even to strangers like us. People are often cold to traveling performers like us, especially in places like Moardain. Torn is not like that, though. People here are quick to trust. They don't mind that we're different. I can also get behind the notion of people and blades coexisting. You know, considering they keep talking that point up, I haven't seen very many blades just kind of, you know, standing around. My friend Azarn and I first met in Araya. Ours was a fated meeting, predestined in the stars. It was, a meet it was meeting him that convinced me that a music-loving heart is down to nature, not nurture. We hit it off immediately. Together we have traveled through Araya, Morardain, Gormont, and now Torna. We'd heard there was lots of money to be made here, and uh, that it was just a really lovely place to visit. And over-serious soldier Terra. Ah, if it isn't Prince Adam. Nothing to report today, sir. I do have some gossip for you, though. I've been listening to Niddle's complete history of Torna. Did you know that this palace was built by the combined efforts of legions of humans and blades alike? It was a time of unrest. Morardain was leading the world into industrial revolution and conflict was rife. That's why the palace was built, as a statement to people both at home and abroad of what Torna stands for. It's a testament to the belief that by working together we can make up for our flaws and enhance our strengths. Hearing that has increased my passion for guarding the palace a hundredfold. Well, keep at it. When you love you, when you love what you do, you'd never work a day in your life. Loyal subject Niddle. I worry about Prince Zetter. Not that he does not that he does not possess talent, but he seems to use it to serve only himself. He may think the people don't notice, but they do. The soldiers too. That's why they favor Prince Adam. If he could only see that clearly and use his power to help the inhabitants of Torna. Well, we have some royal intrigue going all over the place, not just over at Adam's, you know, domain, but here also. Right. Well, there's not much left to do, except talk to that guy there. Unfortunately, we are a bit over time, so I'm going to be ending the video here. Viewers, thank you very much for watching. Let's play Torn of the Golden Country. In the next episode, we'll start by talking to Clemens there. Clemens? Yeah. Well, however you pronounce his name, we're going to talk to him. Or her? Jeez, I don't know anything about this person. Anyway, <clears throat> that's what we're going to do first, and we'll see what develops from there. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.